come back to my church. He said, I told Noah to build an ark. I'm telling you to build an altar. He said, that's why I knocked you down to knock some sense into you. And I reminded you what you already know. And that's how to pray. Amen. Amen. So if we drop, drop and roll in the middle of the service and pray to the end, if you get bored, that's on you. Amen. But God's house in these last and evil days ain't, ain't much celebrating going on. Amen. And we're going to show you today. Amen. Amen. So, yes, we're going to teach so you'll have a foundation to know, but we're going to pray at the end. Amen. He wants the altar to be used again. He wants yeah. people to pray in the church. Ministers, yeah. we got to pray. Pray at home. And we ain't praying for forms. You go, oh, look at me pray, everybody. Mm -mm. Pray at your house. Because yeah. if, you, if you start praying and get the heart of prayer at home, God's going to give you what you need for his people, yeah. for one another. We're going to begin to connect in another way, and he's going to break down what the enemy is doing. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Let's worship uh, and sing one more song, and then I'm going to get into uh, uh, share a word with you from the Lord. I'm sure it's going to bless you because I know God gave it to me. And don't run off. I'm not going to be long. But I have something for you from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Y'all got, got another praise the Lord? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I'm telling you, come, come pray. Dress your best, but come ready to pray. Amen. 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 Prayer is not going to be for Wednesday night only. It's going to be for Sunday morning. He said, make an altar. Amen. 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 Sunday is prayer and Bible study. Amen. 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 Come on, let's worship. Hallelujah. Unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's worship unto the Lord. Sunday ain't just show out time. And let's, Sunday is prayer time. We're going to build an altar for the Lord.
Say that with us, Lord. We need to see an awakening. Amen. Praise God. That's what the song says. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Let's give the Lord a hand for them. Amen. Amen. All of that, all of that's coming. As, the, as God's people obey his word. Amen. And began to turn his house into a house of prayer. Destroying evil cauldrons. Amen. Amen. Evil cauldron. A cauldron is a pot. Ezekiel chapter 24, verses 1 through 5 says, Again in the ninth year, the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the king of Babylon. Set himself against Jerusalem this day, and utter a parable unto the rebellious house, and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Set on a pot. Say, set on a pot. Set it on and also pour water into it. Gather the pieces thereon, thereof into it, even every good piece. Say every good piece. Come here, Xavier. Grab that pot for me. Amen. Grab me that pot right there. Just put it right here in the center. The thigh and the shoulder. Fill it with the choice bones. Say the thigh. The, thigh. the, shoulder. the shoulder. Fill it with the choice bones. Just put it right here in the center. There, there you go. Fill it with the choice bones. Say, take the choice of the flock. Uh huh. And burn also the bones under it. And make it boil well. And let them see the bones of it therein. Now, the word of the Lord talks uh, to us about evil cauldrons or pots. And the reason I'm going to talk to you about this today is because this is the day where we see it portrayed, but we don't pay attention to where it came from. Now, the Bible uh, talks about two prophets, both Jeremiah and Ezekiel, who dealt with this thing called pots or cauldrons. And uh, in Ezekiel here, the Lord is prophesying uh, through Ezekiel that Jerusalem, because of their sin or because they haven't put God first, because God is in first in their life, that they are about to be boiled. They are about to be put into a cauldron. And if you'll notice again, he says in verse 4, gather the pieces thereof into it. He's talking about any and everybody in Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem is talking about the Israelites. He's talking about God's people. And it's a prophetic word to the people of God. See, we as the people of God, a lot of time we believe Jesus got me. Uh, I know I'm saved. I know I've been born again and all this. But the Lord is saying, even though you're born again, you're not living according to the standard that I have set for born-again people. You know, my church uh, is not walking in the righteousness it ought to be walking in. And in the case of the uh, children of Israel, he would bring prophetic words to the place where he says, these are the people of the Lord, and they have gone out of the land. When he would have the prophet to drop a plumb line, the plumb line is to determine the boundaries. And if you see anybody building a building, or surveyors with a plumb line, they are making sure that the boundaries are right. That's how you can set uh, boundaries for your house so your neighbor don't put his fence on your yard. They use a plumb line. And that's, they have a way where they, they, they go by the stars or they go through a GPS system and they see, okay, Mr. Connolly's line is right here and Mr. Jones' line is right there. That way I can't put my she shed, he shed on your property. And so... Uh, God had a way that he could look and see through the prophetic uh, word of uh, instruction and revelation that these are the people of the Lord, but what are they doing on Babylonian soil? The, the way they're living, the way they're talking, the way they're acting. And so God would judge them. And so right here, he's getting ready to judge them, and he begins by telling them, 
on this day, uh, the 10th month, on this day, uh, here's what we're finna, finna do. Give them a word and let them know that they're about to be boiled. Now, he says, I want you to gather the pieces, the good pieces. That means people who, who say they walk with God. Uh, gather the thigh, the body of Christ, the shoulders, the choice bones. So that means nobody is exempt. That means the preacher. That means the deacon. That means the singer. That means whoever you are. Nobody is exempt. The choice bones, the person who look like they got it all together. Anybody, if they get out of the, walking out of the will of God, can be boiled, can be put in this seething pot. Take the choice of the flock. That means the children. When you offer the sacrifice, you offered the best young lamb. Matter of fact, they had to have a lamb that was a year old when they were offering every year for their sin until Jesus came, one without blemish. That means that your works don't mean anything if you are still walking contrary to the plan of God. So when he says take the choice of the flock, that's you. That's me. He says, burn also the bones under it and make it boil. And let it them see the bones in it. It's like mama and grandmama, them, they was really finna do some good cooking. They boil the bones to get that broth. You don't throw them bones away. Rover don't get them. You boil that to get that marrow flavor out of that. And that's where you're going to make some good soup. And this about soup time. And so what he was saying, that if you don't get your life in order, the enemy finna make soup out of you. Amen. And so you are not so churchy that the enemy ain't got a pot big enough to put you in. No matter how good you sing, how good you preach, how good, how long you've been going to church, and how good intent you think, you, oh, I, I got a good heart. He said the choice bones and the choice of the flock, because if you determine to walk in iniquity and hide stuff, the enemy got a pot for you. Now, today is Halloween. And the whole spirit of Halloween ain't just about kids and candy. It's about a force in the earth that is really demonic, that the real intent behind it is to get the show all year long that we want to boil people in soup. This is just the day they come out the closet. Gay folk ain't the only one coming out the closet. This is their day to come out the closet and be bold and brazen about it and tell you, we'll show you the soup pot right in front of you. But you're so slow about it, you will participate in it. Matter of fact, you will add ingredients to it. In a good soup, it's got a lot of different ingredients to it. So when we see the witch stirring it, and now, you know, it's only in cartoons and movies. We just laugh at it and say, that's just some old superstition. The witch represents, according to 1 Samuel 15, the spirit of rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness, iniquity, idolatry. You and I become the witch. The devil supplies the pot. He supplies the format for you to create your own soup. The stubbornness is when we fail to walk according to the commandments of the Lord. That's why he's talking to his own people. Paul said, don't go to sleep on me. Paul said, oh foolish Galatians who have bewitched you. Now these is church folk. These is folk that knew God, but they are operating in a witchcraft spirit. Believers, I cannot stress enough, 
anytime, whenever we walk contrary to the will of God, we may as well buy a hat and get the dress because we are walking in witchcraft. You are hearing a lot about it today, and we just pretend like it's not real, but it's real. As far as God is concerned, it's not just some kind of thing we are doing. We are operating in witchcraft, idolatry, and we are preparing ourselves to be put into a seething pot to be boiled, our life, our flesh, our marriage, our ministries, our health. We are opening the door for satanic attack. Adam didn't die the first day physically that he sinned. He didn't die. But he opened the door to death. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let's take a marriage. Divorce is rampant. You don't just wake up on Monday and decide you don't want to be married no more. A pot was presented. And little by little, if you read this word right here, he told them to add some water to it. He says in verse 3, and utter a parable unto the rebellious house. Rebellion came in. Somebody decided they didn't want to do right. You didn't just go from Sunday to everybody loving one another to Monday. Somebody say, I don't love you no more. Rebellion came in. You can take that with one of your kids. Your kid didn't just go from being a good child to all of a sudden they building a bomb in the room. All of a sudden they brewing their own liquor. They went from one thing. All of a sudden men, young boys is jumping out of the window. All of a sudden, there's a girl under the bed, and she pregnant nine months. She didn't just pop up and be nine months. She didn't just learn how to have sex like that. They didn't just learn how to smoke a cigarette. Yesterday, they couldn't smoke. Now they're blowing smoke rings. That takes a little practice. Rebellion set in, which is stubbornness. I'm not going to do what you say. I'm not going to come when you say come. I'm not going to go when you say go. I'm not going to get off the phone because you say so. I'm not going to study because you say so. I'm not going to go to class because you say so. I'm not going to, you know, be obedient just because you say so. Rebellion came in. It's right there. Say unto him, thus said the Lord, set on a pot. I mean, put a pot on the stove. Get the pot, get the kettle, set it on, and pour water into it. Why? Because something is getting ready to be put into it. Portions of your life. So any one of us, when we decide this week we're not going to read our Bible, but we're going to start playing around, playing hobo games, playing with hexes, Playing with spells and incantations, believing the whisper lies that somebody's whispering at us. You think that we're just playing and we're trying to be mean. What you are doing, verse 4, you're gathering pieces of your life, your thigh. You let somebody rub on your thigh, you put your thigh in that pot. I know you don't like me because I'm too plain. You let somebody touch on your shoulder, you put in your shoulder, you give your shoulder, your choice bones. What are your choice bones? Yeah, I know somebody got to do this. I was in prayer the other day. Y'all pray for me. And I saw a well-manicured hand. Y'all pray for me. I'm not trying to exalt myself, but y'all my people. Y'all my people. Y'all may get mad and walk away from me, but y'all my people. I saw a well-manicured hand in prayer. This is just how God deal with me. A well-manicured hand. A, a shapely hand. And in that hand, I saw a mouthpiece. This just happened to me, Pastor Lee. 
And in that hand, I saw a mouthpiece, like the mouthpiece of a trumpet. And the mouthpiece was vibrating in that well-manicured hand. I'd been praying about three hours. I got up. I said, Lord, what is that? He said, I want you to go forth and be my mouthpiece. I want you to be a living mouthpiece. Now, you think I'm celebrating that? I'm going to get in trouble. Somebody ain't going to like me. And it may be some of y'all. And this is one of those messages. That living mouthpiece, which you are. He said, you are a shofar, aren't you? What's a shofar? But only those who know that God in his grace, when he told me that, you are a shofar. Gabriel is the original shofar, the last shofar, the last shofar. And God in his grace Everybody who sees that Jesus is coming is nothing more. They don't even know they're shofars. They're little bitty trumpets. I'm a shofar to my wife. Shofar, she's a shofar to me. I'm a shofar to my kids. Come on. I'm a shofar to, in the church. I'm a shofar on my job. I'm a, show, I'm a little trumpet. I'm just a little trumpet. I'm not Gabriel. I'm not walking around. I am the angel Gabriel. That's a lie. But I'm, I'm, I'm anointed like you to tell friends and family. Anytime you witness it, we little trumpets. But now... I believe, he says, you, you, you're going to be a mouthpiece in this generation. Well, what are we praying for? For our words to fall to the ground? Not to be heard? But we're going to line up with God's word. And here's what his word says. That the enemy is trying to get you and I to be a part of a good soup. We've been watching this witch's brew, and we don't even know what it means. We're looking for an old, ugly woman staring some mess. But the truth is, every time we rebel, God say, go pray today. God say, come to church. God say, pay your tithes. God say, give. God say, support uh, the, the vision. He said, quit talking about people. Uh, quit doing, tearing, turn the ministry down, the vision down. All we're doing is stirring a pot. And you know whose life, whose life we're, uh, we, we're hurting? Our own. Even we don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it ain't for you to know. But you ain't hurting nobody but yourself. And sometimes we get in. We get in union with other people, and we stir in a pot. Oh, come on, we've all done it. But I'm here to tell you that if you want to grow, you got to get to the place where you can say, I'm not going to be a part of what the enemy's doing, and that's to create a pot. My life ain't getting, I'm not getting in no pot that the enemy's got for me. Because he's got a pot for every one of you. I just showed you. For the strong, for the weak. For those of you who are choice, for those of you who are called, for the shoulders, for the thighs, he got it for us corporately, and he got it for you individually. Don't put your thigh in there, because if you put your thigh in there, that meant you had to put your foot in there. You can't put a party anywhere. I'm going to just put a party in there with my friendship with, with, with this person. Where have you put a party? The knee bone connected to the... That's the word of the Lord. If you want to walk with him. We don't have time to read all of that. But in verse 10, he says, heap on wood, kindle the fire, 